Well, happy Thursday evening. I wanted to um, share with you a few things this evening. One of the questions that I always get is, how do I soften my bob line? And so I wanted to share with you how I go in and just three quick ways to be able to soften a bob line that um, really give a lot of movement, swing to the hair, and then also just make it a little bit more lived in and commercial for the client. So our very first way that we're going to talk about is um, deep parallel point cutting. And although it's not a new technique, I think it's one that's maybe underused just a little bit. Hi, Jay Mahmood, so good to see you. Um, you guys, if you don't know Jay Mahmood, that man is brilliant and definitely follow him because I've learned so much. He's like quintessential hair cutter, love him. Okay, so the very first way that we're going to um, soften our bob is going to be deep parallel point cutting. And I want you to take a look at this bob first though, and I'll see if I can get her up high enough that she's above all of the, the comments and people saying hi. I'm so glad you guys joined. That's as high as she goes. So um, what I want you to look at is we have a pretty strong bob line right now. And this bob line was created after I did an undercut and I pulled her out of my closet today and I'm like, oh, let's do something with her. So we have a nice little undercut, which does reduce bulk and create movement. Anytime you do an undercut, you get that. But another thing that it does is it gives me the opportunity to kind of um, change my shape just a little bit. So I'm going to go in and the sections that I'll take, they will be parallel to my end result. Because what we want to do is we want to actually soften this particular line. So what we have to do is we have to keep things in line with where we originally cut the hair. So I'm going to do just one side so you can see the difference. So this, my aim is to make this really quick. So the first technique will be deep parallel point cutting, the second is going to be surface channeling, and then the third is what I call carving from underneath. So you get three quick techniques inside of this short little tutorial. Now if you guys like these tutorials that I do, please, you know, kind of give me some hearts, give me some thumbs up, and uh, I love doing them. They're just kind of fun. I love connecting at this point. So we've got a couple people saying hi and joining. Okay, so here's my first section. So you'll notice that my parting and my line are parallel to each other. And then when I go in with my, with my comb, my comb is going to remain parallel to my line. And then I'll be point cutting into that um, using my comb as the guide. We don't want to collapse our shape at a different angle than we created our original line because it won't look right. We're trying to soften, collapse our shape. So here we go. I'm going to keep my elevation low so down as close to zero as I can, and then my comb is going to be parallel to that line, and then I'm just going in and point cutting my line. Doesn't take a whole lot, because by the time you get to the end, you're going to see a big difference in it. So coming through, I'm running into my undercut right there. So I'm ready for my next section. So on this next section, because I have a little bit more hair, I'll actually be running all the way to that front hairline and then I'm doing my deep parallel point cutting parallel to that. So I'll start in the back picking up just the hair that I just let down. I don't want to pick up all of the hair because I've already done that hair. So coming in here does anybody else does any, not else I don't have one yet but does anybody have a glass of wine with them right now? I'd like to know send me a wine emoji if you've got some wine. Okay, I wish I did. Hi. Hey, you guys, good to see you. Okay, coming in. Doing that deep parallel point cutting, keeping my elevation low, and keeping the distribution in natural fall. Whenever we over direct the hair one direction or the other, we're going to get an opposite reaction. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Someone really important said that. I think it was Sir Isaac Newton. Okay, so I've got some wine. I, I love it. I've got wine coming up. No, but have a Diet Coke. Love it. No, okay. People are definitely ready for their wine. It's um, 6.30 where I'm at. I'm on the Pacific coast. Um, I wish all the way on the coast, but I'm in uh, inland. But it's going to be, okay, that I was so innovative, nice. Um, 
I forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, I'm on the Pacific Coast, so it's only 6.30, so it's almost time for wine. So my second technique, that was deep parallel point cutting. Now I wanna take out a little bit more hair, so I'm going to do surface channeling. So when I do surface channeling, I'm using my six inch angel blades, and these are a Japanese molybdenum steel, and they're um, handcrafted, hand, hand forged, not forged, handcrafted in Japan, but they are forged, not, not uh, cast, which is important because when they forge the steel, they actually are um, folding it and melding it together and it creates a stronger steel so but I'm coming in and I'm picking up the hair sliding down and then carving into the bottom because I'm breaking up that bottom line um, I just had a question would the head be down or straight up it was tipped slightly forward I just adjusted it because you said that I'm like yes it should be straight up because you don't really want the hair falling away from you you want to be going in and creating your shape so skipping a little hair, then coming in and working all the way down. And remember, I'm going to do just one side of this so that you can see the difference that this little bit of hair can actually make in the end result. Going all the way through to the front, maybe one more right here. And because I have this undercut in here, it doesn't, I don't have all the hair in the nape area, so there isn't quite as much to soften as I would normally need to. And I'm taking about one inch sections right there. I have a question, where do I train? Um, I, I trained personally um, in the Seattle area, but I train all across the country now. I um, actually travel and teach for KMS. I'm one of their global educators. And I'm um, going to be doing some filming here soon for them, which will be fun. Okay, so working that point cutting, you can see my elevation is nice and low. And I oh, can't see because of the words. Okay, my mannequin stand, hang on. Let me raise her up. I, I should have done this earlier. I want to get her high enough that you can actually see. I believe in making it easy. Okay, is that better? Whoop, hang on one more. There we go. Okay, is that better as far as, can you see that now above the words? You guys, is that good? I hope so. Okay, so coming in, keeping that elevation low, my comb parallel to my end result. Thank you, so much better. Agreed. Sorry about that. Okay, coming in, taking just the hair that I let down, so that last inch of hair, inch section, and coming in, and once again, I'm using my six inch angel blades. If I were trying to go much deeper, let's say I wanted to create a little bit more, like a deeper, then I would come in and I'd grab my seven inch, which are you know an inch longer, so I have more room. So I could come in here and I could actually go up a lot higher if I wanted to. But I like to stay kind of on that last third of the hair as opposed to getting into a halfway point. So six inch is plenty long for what I'm doing. Okay, so the deep parallel point cutting. And now coming in, I'm working from the back forward because short hair will push long hair, as you know. So I'm working from the back into the front. And once again, I don't need to recut the hair that's underneath, do I? I've already done it. So I'm going to tap, lift up, slide down till I pass my halfway point, and then carve the ends of the hair. So I'm carving the last third of the hair, and I'm deep parallel point cutting just the last third of the hair. So coming in, going down, and down. And you can get a little bit more aggressive if you want to see a little bit more separation in the hair. Okay. Let's do the next section. And I'm going to do, I'll leave the very last section to do a little bit of carving on the top. Okay. As a barber that does mainly men's hair, the tips are still useful. You know, hair is hair, and even if you have short hair, it still applies the same way. I'm working on a one length line. So whenever you're working on a one length line and you want to soften it, you have to soften it where it lives. If you elevate up and try softening your one length line, you're actually placing a layering pattern into the hair in your texture. So I'm just concentrating where the hair lives, where it's at home, and then softening that. So picking up that last inch section that I just let down, coming in, 
low elevation, and deep parallel point cutting. I can't wait for you guys to see the other side. And I want to know how many people just grabbed a glass of wine because I said it. I should have mine coming up the stairs soon into my studio. How many of you guys were along with me on my, um, my creative journey when I started this whole Instagram, uh, Instagram journey, I guess you could say. It was about at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, do you do color? Oh, I want to stop, stop doing color. Um, I'll answer that in a minute. The creative journey, um, I drank a lot of wine and had a lot of fun. I did beehives with, um, with polka dots. I did finger waves and pin curls. It's all back in my, back in my, before there were reels, my videos. So someone just asked if my hair is cut like this. It actually is not because I don't have a real high density of hair. So my hair is um, very strong, a one length line, and it has a small amount of layering that, sit, that lives in the crown area. And then there is a little bit of texture, but the, my, bo <laughs> my bottom line is pretty much intact. But that's because I don't have um, as much hair. Okay, so that, uh, a couple more carving pieces. Here we go. Now, a couple people have asked about my angel blades. Um, oh, and you did, you followed my, Elizabeth followed my journey, I love it. Um, my angel blades, they have a one year warranty on the edge, so against nicks and dings and um, damage, and then also a lifetime warranty on parts. So I'm very excited about them. And if you want to find them, they're on um, seriesbeauty.com in the tools and scissors section. Okay, this is getting pretty tall for me, so I'm gonna stand on my tippy toes. And because of the density of this hair, I'm going to go ahead and do um, my deep parallel point cutting, my surface channeling, and then I'll go through and I'll do the um, carving from underneath because I think it can handle it. Sometimes you wouldn't need to do all three of these techniques on one person, um, but you may need to. So, well, I'm glad you found me on Instagram too. I do have an online program called Sharp Scissor Society, and I see many, um, thank you, Elizabeth, she loves my scissors. Um, many of you on here I know are in Sharp Scissor Society already. And what I do with Sharp Scissor Society is I go through and I take the techniques that I do on my Instagram um, on almost a daily basis, and I break those down and I teach them in 10 to 15 minute techniques. So a little bit of what you've seen tonight is what I will do on my Instagram, or excuse me, on my Sharp Scissors Society. And then once a month I go live and I combine those three elements into um, a completed haircut. And you will not believe this, but I just heard my husband deliver me a glass of wine. Hang on, right behind me. Oh, and it's a big red. You guys, this is the best ever. Hang on, cutting hair and having wine doesn't get much better. <laughs> not in the salon. Mm. I just said not in the salon. Oh, that's nice. Okay, lucky me. Hi, Arizona. Okay, so right now, right away, you can see this, but this is even before I've done the carving from underneath. Take a look at the difference between those two sides. It's subtle, but it's definitely there. So I thought I saw that get delivered. <laughs> Someone was watching. Okay, so you can see all the movement and texture that we have in that. And there's movement and texture in this, but it's a lot lower. You can see where the weight is positioned. It's sitting up a little bit higher and there isn't as much um, of, a round, of a bulkiness to the bottom line. It's more collapsed. And so whenever I want to collapse a shape, this is what I do. Now the surface, or excuse me, the, um, what is it called? Carving from underneath. Only one sip of wine and I'm already wondering. Hang on. Cheers to all you guys. Thank you for following along and joining me. Okay, so carving from underneath. I don't wanna break through my surface of the hair. So I don't actually want to um, see layers on the top surface. I'm gonna be working from underneath and I'm going to take my first parting right at the parietal ridge and above the occipital bone. The reason for that is I want to keep it underneath. So. Let's go ahead and we'll part this off and we'll see if we can take um, the texture to another level. Yes, I'm getting a lot of cheers. Uh, is it illegal to drink on Instagram? I don't think it is. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Okay, so I'm putting down my comb. Um, let me think about that. 
I've done it both ways. So let's try it with the comb first. It just looks a little neater. So I'm going to come in, lift this up, and then I'm going to carve out. So I'm coming directly in. Let me see if I can get a better view on them. Coming in, and then behind my comb, I'm going to carve, and I'm just carving underneath the surface of that hair. So I'm creating some internal um, layers and texture. So coming in, right like that. <coughs> now I'm going to actually switch because I because I have them available to my carbon slide scissors. Now I used to think I can do everything with one scissor. And technically, I, I really can. I mean, I was a one, one scissor hairstylist for a long time. I would use one scissor for everything. And since I've um, gotten into the scissor business, of course, I know that there's differences now. And the reason that I like the curved blade, they're, they're, they're traditionally like a dry cutting scissor. I use them a lot for wet, though, because I like to push boundaries. But they actually push the hair, and you don't... Um, it won't cut a straight line. So when you work, and so yes, I'm gonna let my hair fall into the shears, especially with this one, Molly. Yeah, Molly, there we go. Because you can see the, the rounded blades on them. So watch this, and it's different because the other ones I had to open and close a lot more. And there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes it's fun to just change things up. And these are great for people that maybe don't wanna use a razor, and they want to get a kind of that soft razored effect. Thank you, you guys are so kind. People sending me love, I love it. Okay, so I'm going to come in, same thing, but if you watch, I can just go like this and it just pushes, I just have to go a little bit, it just kind of pushes the hair. I have some of that, I love that, oh yes. Okay, yeah, they're, they're a great type of scissor to have. So right here, and just pushing the hair. And I like the carving from underneath because it literally places those curvatures inside the hair and it allows you to get just incredible movement and texture. Remember, I don't want to break through the top surface of my hair. So if they were parting on the side, then I would work off of a side part, make sure that I'm staying underneath that top surface. Um, my shears are my own brand. Um, during the pandemic with all the wine, I came up with a scissor line called Angel Blades. And you can find them on my website, which is called seriousbeauty.com under the tools section. They're, all my scissors are um, $4.99 and we do offer a payment plan. So that's in there as well. If you're at Sharp Scissor Society, you get a little discount though. And Sharp Scissor Society is my um, online education membership program and it's $14.97 a month and you can cancel any time, rejoin, whatever. Of course I think you shouldn't cancel but you know. Okay there we go. And then if you want to watch this, I'm just going to go like this. I want to get a little carving so you can see this. Why wouldn't you do the technique under the parietal ridge? Um, on the sides, you definitely could but if you want to keep structure to the bottom line then I wouldn't want to take too much out. I've already done deep parallel point cutting and um, carving, or excuse me, um, surface channeling. So it might be a little bit too much um, for, you just might lose the structure of the line. Um, I have a question in there about um, how do, do I do hair color and how do you stop if you don't wanna do it anymore? I don't do hair color anymore. I have maybe a couple people that I, that I do work on um, that I do a couple trades with one gal does all my social media photography and everything so I trade with her she's a, an amazing um, so, uh, singer her name's Cami Bradley I'm Carmen Jane is her handle but um, I don't do color anymore because all of my content for you guys is hair cutting and so I would like to focus on that and not spend my my time because time is really precious and um, if I can't create the right content with it, then I'd rather not, you know, do it. So I just have worked out of doing color. Um, and the way that I did it was I took a six month sabbatical, which is almost over. And I'm just returning and I'm not doing color and I'm raising my prices. So keep the weight and outline shape below the parietal, yes. So the reason I did not do this below the parietal ridge on the sides 
is because I want to keep some structure to my bottom line. So, okay, you guys ready to see this? Our time together is almost over, but look at the difference we have here. And let's see, I want, hang on, there we go, just a little bit of hairspray. I mentioned that I was a KMS artist and a global artist. I'm going to be doing the show in Amsterdam coming up. I don't know if any of you guys are going to be there, but it's going to be fun. Um, yeah, look at that. Look at the difference between those two sides. This was the working spray, which is nice when you're trying to look at texture. I don't really want it to be stiff, but I want to see the texture develop. Oh, thank you for trying. Oh, you know what? Okay, so somebody just said, I think it was Shailen. Okay, she says, I love trying your techniques. It's made me much more confident behind the chair. My goal with everything I do is to create confidence in the hairdresser because that confidence is what we pass on to the client. And that to me is the ultimate goal is that we enhance and enrich people's lives um, and make women and men feel better. So, okay, take a look at that. So you've got, sorry, I didn't style her bangs very good. Yeah, your, your male clients with long hair, yeah, totally. Hair is hair, it doesn't know where it lives. I mean, it was gender neutral before gender neutral was a thing. Okay, so let's take a look at that. You can see the two sides. If I were in salon doing the salon speed and not talking or drinking my wine, I could have done this in five minutes. So it's a very quick way to create a much um, more beautiful shape. Still has a solid line to it, but yeah, it's much more elongated, not quite so much of a triangle. Look how heavy that looks. Let's give her a little shake. Yep, and so it actually will make the, the hair appear slightly longer because it does narrow it out. Thank you, Jay, appreciate it. Okay, so there we go. We have our three quick techniques um, to soften and round out a bob. The first was our deep parallel point cutting, um, which is where we place our partings, our scissor, and our comb all parallel to the line that we want. The second was our surface channeling, and that's where we create a little bit of separation in the ends. And then the third was our carving from underneath, and that creates a lot more texture and movement inside of this interior. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will um, share another one probably next week, although I'll be in New York and then up in Toronto. So um, I'm not sure how, um, how much I'll be able to share, but you never know. So you guys, great to see you. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.